amount of cocaine was lost. I need you to go and get it. No, 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 don't eat that, don't eat that. Let's see what kind of effect that has on me. The bear, it fucking did cocaine. A bear did cocaine. Actually, that pretty much sums it up. This week on Talking About the Movies, we're talking about Cocaine Bear. Welcome to another edition of Talking About the Movies. And today, of course, we're talking about the biggest new release of the weekend. And that is, of course, Cocaine Bear. Based off of a true story, loosely inspired by a true story. I mean, because technically this did happen. A black bear ingested millions of dollars in cocaine into his body in about in 1985. But, of course, he died from that. But... Not in this movie, he doesn't. In fact, he goes on a killing spree, and um, that's part of the fun of this movie. I mean, the movie literally tells you everything you need to know about this movie. It's a bear on cocaine, and he's going g crazy and killing people and just doing all kinds of ridiculous stuff. And, um, yeah, the movie's pretty damn awesome. The movie pretty much delivers on everything it promises and then some. And, um, I mean, from that first trailer alone, when they show you the bear in cocaine, going crazy and killing people. It's so much fun to watch. It is some of the most hilarious, over-the-top, gonzo, crazy stuff that you will see in any movie with a title called Cocaine Bear. And it's funny because I feel like this movie was kind of what Kangaroo Jack was going to be. Remember Kangaroo Jack from 2003? Love the jacket, Charlie. Nice. I said a hip hop. The hippie, the hippie did a hip hip hop and you don't stop the rock, dude. Yeah, that god-awful piece of shit. Um, yeah, most people forget that that movie was supposed to be a, a hard R comedy. It was supposed to be a mob comedy in the style of Midnight Run. And they actually were shooting it as a comedy, as that comedy. But then they decided, at the, after the last six months into production, they decided, you know what, we're going to make this a straightforward family comedy. And the results speak for themselves. And the movie... That movie ends up being terrible, and we never get to see what an R-rated Kangaroo Jack would be like until this movie. I feel like this movie was trying to be that what that movie was, what Kangaroo Jack was going to be, and it definitely shows in this movie. I mean, it delivers on everything it promises. It's just, it's just a ton of fun. You really like this bear, like you know that he's the bad guy. You know that he's the He's the obvious antagonist because he's killing all these people, but you're just along for the ride. This is such a fun character to watch, and it's good. it's just fun to watch these these great actors work off of this bear and just go through the situations that they have to deal with. You got a great cast that includes uh, Kerry Russell, O'Shea Jackson Jr., uh, Alden Ehrenreich, Brooklyn Prince, Isaiah Whitlock, Margot Martin, Martindale, Ray Liotta, Wendell Pierce. Um, it's just an amazing fun fun time to watch this movie and you wouldn't think that this would have come from elizabeth banks who i've liked elizabeth banks as an actress and i've liked her as a director before like i liked what she did with pitch perfect 2 even though i didn't think that was a great film overall it's still a de decent sequel i kind of think of it as the d2 the mighty ducks of the pitch perfect series because it kind of falls into that same plateau but um yeah she kind of had a step for backwards when she did the charlie's angels reboot which was not very good it was widely panned and Probably for obvious reasons, because it just it just didn't work. She's the right person to do it, but I don't know. I just don't think that movie was working very well. But this mo didn't work well at all, I should say. But this movie definitely delivers on what it promises. This is such a fun, silly, over the top, dark, gory ride that you just if you're if the title doesn't sell you right away, then you shouldn't bother to see it. But I just love what Universal has been doing the last couple of years with these movies that. Ten years ago, probably couldn't get made or wouldn't have made a ton of money, but you get so many of these bizarre, over-the-top movies. Like we, It goes all the way back to Krampus, and then just in the last year, we've had Beast with Idris Elba, which is a very fun, underrated movie where he's basically fighting a bunch of tigers. It's directed by the same guy that did Everest. I really recommend you check that out. And then just recently, we had Violent Night, which was David Harbaugh as, an, as John McClane's Santa Claus, which was freaking amazing, a fantastic, fantastic movie. And then... You have this movie here, and it doesn't deliver on everything it promises, but you know what? It does everything in a cons in a solid half hour and a half time period. Like it never feels like it's it's making you sit there spending way too long in there. It gets out at just the right time, and really, 
it is by the end of it, I was really happy that I came out of this being as happy as I was because this was a movie that could have easily gone another way. It could have gone at Snakes on a Plane where it could have been if there was a wide, if there was a full audience there, it would have been fun to watch. But once you watch it at home, it's not really all that investing. And yeah, Samuel Jackson can say lines like this: "Enough is enough." I have had it with these motherfucking snakes on this motherfucking plane. Yeah, he can say lines like that as much as he wants to, but that's not going to save the movie, and that movie was quickly forgotten shortly after it came out. But, um, yeah, this movie was definitely a lot of fun. I had a real good time watching this movie, especially, uh, you know, especially after everything that is, like, all the me the social media buzz for this movie was so high. The fact that, go to the Twitter page for Cocaine Bear, and you will see a pretty good Twitter feed on that one, but... But the people who run that tweet, Twitter feed, give them all the awards, man. Give them the awards for marketing because that's such brilliant, brilliant marketing that they do there. And the movie is just a ton of fun. I really don't know how much more I can say about this movie except it's one of the most fun times I've had in a long time. Probably since Jackass Forever last year that I can't remember how much fun I had with a movie like this. I mean, this is such an amazing, good, fun time. It's it's pretty much delivers on everything it promises. It's so much fun. It's so gonzo crazy. It's so ridiculously over the top. It's f bloody as all hell. Just, I don't know what more I can say about it. This movie is pretty freaking awesome. I give this movie a big thumbs up. One of my favorite, this is probably my favorite movie of the year so far. We're only about, what, eight weeks into 2023. But this is definitely making a strong case for the top ten list at, at this, by the end of the year. I mean, I just had a lot of fun watching this movie. I really recommend checking it out and, um, I'll I'll, I will more than likely check it out again. Maybe not in theaters because we've got so many movies coming out in the next couple of weeks. But definitely when it comes out on Blu-ray, I'm picking it up and I'm watching it the first time I get it. Because, man, this was a good, fun time. I highly recommend checking it out. Conque Bear, you will not be disappointed by it if you go into it with the right mindset. So... So that's Cocaine Bear. Let me know your thoughts below. Did you agree with me that, it's a, that it delivers what it promises? Or did you not think it delivered what it promises? Let me know in the comments below. And um, I'll and uh, we will move on from there. So <laughs> uh, thank you very much for watching. And I'll see you guys next time. And um, uh, that's it. So thank you for watching. I'll see you guys next time. And until then, take care.